The arrival of the spring, which is what Nowruz is all about, has been celebrated in Kurdistan for a long time. The tradition of celebrating Nowruz is actually so old that it has been celebrated during Neolithic periods in human history, a time which began around 10,000 BC and ended up in around 2000 BC. One of the main myths surrounding Nowruz is the story of Ejdahak, a notorious king who ruled the area in and around Kurdistan a long time ago. According to the story, the king suffered from a rare illness which made two snakes grow from each of his shoulders. The thing about these two snakes were that they fed on human brains, more specifically firstborn sons' brains. Eventually, they threatened Ashtahak, making him starting a campaign to arrest and execute all the firstborn sons in Kurdistan. Day after day, the soldiers of Ashtahak arrested and fed the snakes with brains of Kurdistan's first sons. This cruel rule would last for many many years, and each year the spring had stopped to arrive into Kurdistan. Another main character of the story is Kawa, the blacksmith. He had already lost six sons to Ejdahak, and one day the guards of Ejdahak came again to get his seventh and last son. Kawa was fed up with losing all his sons to the king, and in an argument with the two guards, he ended up killing them with his hammer. He then started to prepare himself and his people for an uprising against the evil king. Kawa established a group of people, learned them to use weapons and then marched towards the castle of Ashdahak. Eventually Kawa killed Ashdahak and afterwards he set the hills of Kurdistan on fire to mark to his people that he had succeeded bringing down the tyrant. The spring returned to Kurdistan the very next day, and 20th of March is traditionally known as the day when Kawa defeated Ashdahak, while the next day, 21st of March, is known as the arrival of the spring. This legend still reminds Kurds of their own oppression until this day. It also inspires Kurds to lead their own uprising against today's oppression. The lighting of fire has since become a symbol of freedom and it is a tradition at Nowruz celebrations to jump over the fire. Jumping over the fire is also an act of self-cleaning and to leave the bad behind you. Among Kurds, Nowruz is considered the most important holiday in our culture. During the traditional celebration of Nowruz, Kurds prepare themselves with games family gathering, dancing, and special food as well as poetry reading. Nowruz is all about having a good time with friends, relatives, and close ones. For the children, there is a lot of sweets and good stuff to be offered. People usually paint eggs and trade gifts with each other. The older people often give money to the younger people. Others don't celebrate. Instead, they go to the graves of their loved ones to visit them one more time before the year ends. People usually prepare special and beautiful dresses for Nowruz. The elders does everything to solve family problems before the New Year's because there is a Kurdish saying that if a new year starts in a bad way, it will be a whole bad year. Usually, Kurds celebrate Nowruz several days before the 21st of March. They often go to picnics and enjoy times together with themselves and other people where Kurdish food is usual to be served. Due to the separation of Kurds, Kurdish Nowruz is celebrated in different ways depending on where in Kurdistan you live. In Iranian and Iraqi occupied Kurdistan, the celebration is more about family, culture and happiness, while in Syrian occupied Kurdistan and Turkish occupied Kurdistan, it has been more about a political matter since both Syria and Turkey have oppressed the holiday for centuries and of course the people who celebrates it.
The Kurdish Nowruz has also been oppressed in Iranian and Iraqi occupied Kurdistan, but not as much as it has been in, as we said, Syrian and Turkish occupied Kurdistan. Another difference is that Nowruz in Western Turkey, but also Turkish occupied Kurdistan, often is celebrated within the cities in order to expose the celebration to media. While in Iraqi and Iranian occupied Kurdistan, the Kurds often travel in the cities to countryside to sit and enjoy with their close one. The political struggle of Nowruz has mainly been highlighted in Turkish and Syrian occupied Kurdistan. Here, the celebration have become a symbol of Kurdish attempts to express and resurrect the Kurdish identity. While the Kurdish celebration of Nowruz in Turkish occupied Kurdistan is a political expression, the celebration in Iranian occupied Kurdistan closely resembles the ones that is celebrated by Persians, Baluchis and Afghans. In Turkish occupied Kurdistan, celebrating Nowruz has been very controversial for a very long time. Thousands of people have been tortured, jailed and killed for this matter. The Kurds have throughout the oppression made resistance to gain the right to celebrate the holiday. In the year of 2000, Turkey made an attempt to Turkify the holiday by legalizing it and calling it Nowruz. The official spelling of Nowruz was forbidden in Turkey, but the Kurds still use it widely. Throughout the years, the Turkish government have been highlighted for their heavy persecution of the day Nowruz. Not at least during the 1992 celebration when over 90 Kurdish civilians were killed, or the 2008 celebration where two persons were killed, while a lot of people were taken away, jailed and tortured in Turkish prisons. In Rojava, Kurds have had a hard time celebrating Nowruz. One example is a 2008 celebration where three Kurds were shot dead by the police for celebrating Nowruz. After the Syrian civil war, Kurds in Rojava have gained their freedom and are now celebrating without any interference from anybody. The holiday of Nowruz remains an oppressed but very beautiful holiday and it is important for everyone to keep up in the family to celebrate Nowruz every year for the rest of their life. Don't forget to like this video, comment your opinion down below and subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you don't miss any further videos on this channel.